college football playoff expansion. And last week at Big Ten Media Days, I didn't get to talk about it a whole lot, but the Big Ten said that they are in favor of playoff expansion, which is kind of funny considering that they decided to vote against it last year. And the big reason why they decided to vote against it was, of course, uh, they wanted automatic qualifiers as if the Big Ten really needed that, right? They were always going to be one of the top six rated conference champions, but they had an alliance with the Pac-12 and with the ACC. Now, I don't blame Kevin Warren for taking USC and UCLA if those two schools decided to reach out to the Big Ten, right? I don't blame them because Greg Sankey was in the exact same position. Texas and Oklahoma wanted to leave the Big 12. They reached out to the SEC. If the SEC did not take them, the Big Ten would have. If the Big Ten did not take USC and UCLA, the SEC would have, right? You have to make smart decisions when you realize that something is out there on the market and it's going to go somewhere else aside from staying where it is, right? We understand how that works. But back to the college football playoff expansion here. First off, let's talk about the fact that they are softening their stance on AQs. Right? Kevin Warren admitted this last week. He said, yes, we are going to soften our stance on that. I don't know that we necessarily have to have automatic qualifiers if we are going to expand the college football playoff. Now, the AQ issue, and Sankey was big on this, right? You start attaching actual names to the highest-rated conference champions. You start just giving it to these five specific conferences, and you are begging for a lawsuit. You are begging for all kinds of things, right? And Michael Resco with the AAC has let it be known that he ain't happy with the way that it's done, even though he got Cincinnati into the playoff last year. So, uh, yeah, as far as the AQs go, I don't know that we necessarily need them, especially if we're going to 12 or if we're going to 16. Uh, the only way that you could do it, really, and not get in trouble is to, one, not attach any actual names to it, and two, uh, you might have to just give every conference their conference champion gets into the playoff. And if you do that, there's 11 conferences, uh, or, well, 10, if you don't include the independents, but 10 conferences, so you got those 10 champions, and then either two wild cards or six wild cards if you move to 16. This is what they talked about. They talked about moving to 16 teams. Kevin Warren brought it up, and then later Gene Smith, who said, you can't ignore the talk around 16. But my question is, who was saying it? I, I did not hear anybody in the media on message boards, et cetera, other than a few people here and there on social media talking about how cool 16 would be, right? The idea behind it is if you had 12, you have buys. And those teams that get buys are much more likely to advance in a 12-team playoff than those, uh, than those that would have played, you know, 17 games at the end of it, right? The, the ones that lose their conference title game, the ones that... Uh, don't even play in a conference title game, etc. Those kinds of teams are the ones that are not as likely to advance in a playoff. So you're not looking at as many games, right? There's When you have 12 teams, you're looking at only having 11 playoff games. So in that situation, you get through 13 games if you play a conference title game. So you've got 13 there, and then you play a, you get a bye in that first round. So now you're still sitting at 13 games. Then you play your uh, quarterfinals. That is your 14th game, your semifinals. And that would be your, what, 16th game or 15th game. And then the national title would be the 16th game. Well, if anybody were to make it from one of those opening weekends in a 12-game format, they are the ones that would play 17 games. And that's it. You're only looking at one team that does that. If you play a 16-team tournament, Everybody plays every weekend. So it does jump from 11 games if you have 12 teams to 15 games if you have 16 teams. And I know who was talking about it. As I just asked, Gene Smith. Gene, who was talking about 16 teams? Well, it, it was Fox. We know that Fox has been in the ear of the Big Ten this entire time. Fox were the ones that did not want uh, the original... Uh, the original expansion idea, 
And the reason they didn't want that original expansion idea is because ESPN had the exclusive rights to negotiate it. Now, was there a way for this deal to get done and then go ahead and expand the playoff early before 2025? I think so. But, again, they had the exclusive negotiating rights window to be able to expand it out further. And if ESPN is the only one at the table, yeah, that's going to change things. But that's the issue. ESPN was never the only one at the table. Fox has been in the Big Ten's ear the whole time. So that's who was actually saying it. Uh, I don't know that you can get this pushed through the way that it currently sits right now. Because if you do this, there are multiple teams that play 17, some that may play more than that. Uh, it's just kind of a wreck, right, if you have 16 teams because you're you're adding a lot of extra games. And so whoever plays in the national title game is going to add four games here. And you start looking at teams that maybe play Hawaii in the non-con and they get 13 regular season games and then a you know, it, then it, it starts to get a little bit crazy, right? You start looking at a lot of games for a college football player. But I think the way that you get around that is you start working on that revenue sharing. That was talked about last week. It, no, college football players are not unionizing. We've talked. I, I did not get a chance to talk about that with Sean, uh, Sean Clifford, et cetera, with the Big Ten and having all these meetings about player revenue sharing last week. Didn't get to talk about it. But it's not happening yet. But would it surprise me if if it does happen? No. It would not surprise me at all because if you were to give $50,000 to all 85 scholarship football players per season, you're only looking at a little over $5 million. And for these schools with an athletic budget with, with TV revenue of more than $100 million coming in a year, $5 million bucks ain't a lot to throw out there. That, it's like 5%. Right, it, you can find a way to give them fifty grand a year, something along those lines. And if you do that, if they're automatically in a contract, then you're good to expand to whatever you would like to, because at that point they can collectively bargain. They can talk about whatever they want. So there are ways that this could happen. Do I think it's a smart idea? No, because your one versus sixteen game is going to be a disaster. Your two versus fifteen, etc. Those will likely be disasters. Right. The only way that I could see somebody coming from that far back and winning, uh, whichever year it was that USC came on so hot towards the end of the season after they changed out quarterbacks, et cetera, uh, you know, something along those lines where you've got a team that is just loaded with talent but starts off the year cold as ice and then they're able to work their way back in. People would love to see that. Mm, I don't know. I, it, I feel weird about teams that are getting three and four losses being allowed into this thing, but. We're moving that direction, regardless. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.